Hi, and welcome to your next video in Computer Science for Everyone. This time we're going to talk about data types. So, I have here the class we created in the last programming video, and now I'm going to remove those parts that are not interesting to us, which is pretty much everything we did in the last time. Notice how removing that method makes this go red and saying there's nothing that exists. So, take that away. I'm going to remove all these comments, and there I'm left with just the basic um, part of the class. So I have the class called intro class. Remember that a class is just the, uh, the main building block of Java programs for now. And then I have the main method, which is a public static void main method. So let's create our data types. In order to create a variable, we simply say the data type of the variable, and then the name of the variable, and then what it equals. So for example, we can create a string, which is, as we know, a set of characters. We call it hello, and then we assign to it a value called hello world. Similarly, we can do this in two steps. I'm creating a string called other string, and I'm not assigning a value to it. And then in the next line, I'm assigning a value to it. We can do this. The same thing can happen with integers. For example, int x equals 5, or int y, y equals 10. We can do this as well, and the same for any other data type. When you're creating a variable, you don't necessarily have to give it a value. Well, for now, however, I will give values to my variables in one line, simply because I find that easier to read. So we have created strings and integers. We can create a long data type. In this case, it's just another whole number. Only that time, unlike integer, can hold more numbers. Whereas integer can only hold up to 2 to the power of 31. Long can hold up to 2 to the power of 63, which I've mentioned in the presentation. Float. See, if I do this, it gives me an error. Remember, we have to put the F at the end of float data types. And then double. I'm running out of letters, so I'm just going to call it my double. You can obviously give your variables any name you want, except for a few exceptions. Well, I mention I'll, I'll mention them in a second. Doubles and floats can have a lot of numbers behind a decimal place. Most of the time, you won't need so many. So, what did I mean with? You can't give them some names. You can give them most names, but not some of them. Well, as a starter, variables cannot start with a number, for example. And the only um, names you can use are those that are not used by the language. So, for example, if I create a variable integer, which I want to name public, you see how public goes purple, because it's a keyword of Java. And then, if I assign this a value, it will give me an error because public will say it's invalid variable declarator ID. This this ID for the variable declaration is not valid because it is a, a Java keyword. The great thing about this program, Eclipse, is that it will color those words in that are part of the language. So if you do select one word that is part of the language and it goes purple, then or you get an invalid variable declaration ID error, then you'll know that your variable name is wrong. Then, a, a common practice is either to name your variables with camel case capitalization, which I've mentioned in, in the first programming video we created, which is, uh, for example, my integer or my whole number. But the first letter is not uppercase. Every next word will be uppercase. Or... 
if your variable is not going to change throughout the program, then you can call it some constant, all in capitals and with an underscore uh, between the words. In order to define a constant in Java, you need to say that the value is going to be final. The value is not going to change throughout the program. And this is fairly simply done like that. So this is that. Let's keep going with our car. This is obviously not a very good practice to, to name your character the same letter as the character is holding. Um, if C was a, an important character that meant something, you could you could use a self-descriptive variable name that would tell you what the character means. For example, exit letter or something like that. And make it final if it's a constant or exit letter like that. For example, if you were waiting for the user to press letter C on exit, you could call your variable exit letter so that in the future you would know what this what this exit letter means. And finally, we have boolean. And we can obviously, just as in the example, change its value or like that or you can change the value many times even though nothing is happening between these two statements Java will still accept that you want to change the value twice for some reason finally notice how I cannot create a variable call my, var my variable, my var, or any other name of the type void. And the error that Eclipse will give me is void is an invalid type for the variable my var. Because as I've said, void can only be used in methods, at least in Java. So as we can see, void is here, and that's the method, and that's the type of the method. As we will see in the future, methods can also have types like string or int or long or float. And what a method with string or int or long or float data type will do is something we will see in a later lecture. So for now, let's move into the next video and I'll see you in the next one.